Welcome to today's Triple Z. The Triple Z Podcast is a daily program that you can use to help you fall asleep each night. Just turn down the volume, lay back, relax, and enjoy as you fall asleep. We saw that our podcast was topping the charts in Hong Kong. So we are going to read their Wikipedia entry. Let's learn about this interesting country in the dullest way possible. If you enjoy our program, please be sure to write us a review on your podcast platform and share us with a friend. You both might sleep just a little better at night. Our website is triple Z, that's three Z's dot media. You can also like and share our content on Facebook or our Instagram account ZZZ Media Podcast. Music for today's episode was provided by the Sleep Channel on Spotify. Hong Kong, officially the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China, is a city and special administrative region of China on the eastern Pearl River Delta in South China. With 7.5 million residents of various nationalities in a 1,104 square kilometer, 426 square miles territory, Hong Kong is one of the most densely populated places in the world. Hong Kong is also a major global financial center and one of the most developed cities in the world. Hong Kong was established as a colony of the British Empire after the Qing Empire ceded Hong Kong Island from Xi'an County at the end of the First Opium War in 1841 then again in 1842. The colony expanded to the Kowloon Peninsula in 1860 after the Second Opium War and was further extended when Britain obtained a 99-year lease of the new territories in 1898. British Hong Kong was occupied by Imperial Japan from 1941 to 1945 during World War II. British administration resumed after the surrender of Japan. The whole territory was transferred to China in 1997. As one of China's two special administrative regions, the other being Macau, Hong Kong maintains separate governing and economic systems from that of mainland China under the principle of one country, two systems. Originally a sparsely populated area of farming and fishing villages, the territory has become one of the world's most significant financial centers and commercial ports. It is the world's 10th largest exporter and 9th largest importer. Hong Kong has a market economy characterized by a focus on services, low taxation and free trade. Its currency, the Hong Kong dollar, is the 8th most traded currency in the world. Hong Kong is home to the third highest number of billionaires of any city in the world, the second highest number of billionaires of any city in Asia, and the largest concentration of ultra high net worth individuals of any city in the world. Although the city has one of the highest per capita incomes in the world, severe income inequality exists among the population. Most notably, housing in Hong Kong has been well documented to experience a chronic persistent shortage. The extremely compact house sizes and the extremely high housing density are the effects of Hong Kong's housing market being the least affordable and the most expensive housing market in the world. Hong Kong is a highly developed territory and ranks fourth on the UN Human Development Index. The city has the largest number of skyscrapers of any city in the world, and its residents have some of the highest life expectancies in the world. The dense space has led to a highly developed transportation network with public transport rates exceeding 90%. Hong Kong is ranked third in the Global Financial Centers Index. The name of the territory, first Romanized as Hong Kong in 1780, originally referred to a small inlet located between Aberdeen Island and the southern coast of Hong Kong Island. Aberdeen was an initial point of contact between British sailors and local fishermen. Although the source of the Romani's name is unknown, it is generally believed to be an early phonetic rendering of the Cantonese or Tonka Cantonese phrase Hyung Gong. 
The name translates as fragrant harbor or incense harbor. Fragrant may refer to the sweet taste of the harbor's freshwater influx from the Pearl River or to the odor from incense factories lining the coast of Northern Kowloon. The incense was stored near Aberdeen Harbor for export before Victoria Harbor was developed. Sir John Davis, the second colonial governor, offered an alternative origin. Davis said that the name derived from Unkin, Red Torrent, reflecting the color of soil over which a waterfall on the island flowed. The simplified name Hong Kong was frequently used by 1810. The name was also commonly written as the single word Hong Kong until 1926, when the government officially adopted the two-word name. Some corporations founded during the early colonial era still keep this name, including Hong Kong Land, Hong Kong Electric Company, Hong Kong and Shanghai Hotels and the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation, HSBC. Earliest known human traces in what is now Hong Kong are dated by some to 35,000 and 39,000 years ago during the Paleolithic period. The claim is based on an archaeological investigation in Wang Ti Tong, Sai Kung in 2003. The archaeological works revealed napped stone tools from deposits that were dated using optical luminescence dating. During the Middle Neolithic period, about 6,000 years ago, the region had been widely occupied by humans. Neolithic to Bronze Age Hong Kong settlers were semi-coastal people. Early inhabitants are believed to be Austronesians in the Middle Neolithic period and later the Yu people. As hinted by the archaeological works in Sha Ha, Sai Kung, rice cultivation had been introduced since late Neolithic period. Bronze Age Hong Kong featured coarse pottery, hard pottery, quartz and stone jewelry, as well as small bronze implements. The Qin Dynasty incorporated the Hong Kong area into China for the first time in 214 BCE after conquering the indigenous Bayou. The region was consolidated under the Nanyu Kingdom, a predecessor state of Vietnam, after the Qin collapse and recaptured by China after the Han Conquest. During the Mongol conquest of China in the 13th century, the Southern Song Court was briefly located in modern-day Kowloon City, the Sung Wong Toy site, before its final defeat in the 1279 Battle of Yaman. By the end of the Yuan Dynasty, seven large families had settled in the region and owned most of the land. Settlers from nearby provinces migrated to Kowloon throughout the Ming Dynasty. The earliest European visitor was Portuguese explorer Jorge Alvarez, who arrived in 1513. Portuguese merchants established a trading post called Tamao in Hong Kong waters and began regular trade with southern China. Although the traders were expelled after military clashes in the 1520s, Portuguese-Chinese trade relations were re-established by 1549. Portugal acquired a permanent lease for Macau in 1557. After the Qing conquest, maritime trade was banned under the hygiene policies. From 1661 to 1683, the population of most of the area forming present-day Hong Kong was cleared under the Great Clearance, turning the region into a wasteland. The Kangxi Emperor lifted the maritime trade prohibition, allowing foreigners to enter Chinese ports in 1684. Qing authorities established the Canton system in 1757 to regulate trade more strictly, restricting non-Russian ships to the port of Canton. Although European demand for Chinese commodities like tea, silk, and porcelain was high, Chinese interest in European manufactured goods was insignificant so that Chinese goods could only be bought with precious metals. To reduce the trade imbalance, the British sold large amounts of Indian opium to China. Faced with a drug crisis, Qing officials pursued ever more aggressive actions to halt the opium trade. In 1839, 
the Daobong Emperor rejected proposals to legalize and tax opium and ordered Imperial Commissioner Lin Zexu to eradicate the opium trade. The commissioner destroyed opium stockpiles and halted all foreign trade, triggering a British military response and the First Opium War. The Qing surrendered early in the war and ceded Hong Kong Island in the Convention of Chuenpi. British forces began controlling Hong Kong shortly after the signing of the convention from January 26, 1841. However, both countries were dissatisfied and did not ratify the agreement. After more than a year of further hostilities, Hong Kong Island was formally ceded to the United Kingdom in the 1842 Treaty of Nanking. Administrative infrastructure was quickly built by early 1842, but piracy, disease, and hostile Qing policies initially prevented the government from attracting commerce. Conditions on the island improved during the Taiping Rebellion in the 1850s, when many Chinese refugees, including wealthy merchants, fled mainland turbulence and settled in the colony. Further tensions between the British and Qing over the opium trade escalated into the Second Opium War. The Qing were again defeated and forced to give up Kowloon Peninsula and Stonecutters Island in the Convention of Peking. By the end of this war, Hong Kong had evolved from a transient colonial outpost into a major entrepot. Rapid economic improvement during the 1850s attracted foreign investment as potential stakeholders became more confident in Hong Kong's future. The colony was further expanded in 1898 when Britain obtained a 99-year lease of the new territories. The University of Hong Kong was established in 1911 as the territory's first institution of higher education. Kai Tak Airport began operation in 1924, and the colony avoided a prolonged economic downturn after the 1925-26 Canton-Hong Kong strike. At the start of the Second Sino-Japanese War in 1937, Governor Jeffrey Northcote declared Hong Kong a neutral zone to safeguard its status as a free port. The colonial government prepared for a possible attack, evacuating all British women and children in 1940. The Imperial Japanese Army attacked Hong Kong on December 8, 1941, the same morning as its attack on Pearl Harbor. Hong Kong was occupied by Japan for almost four years before Britain resumed control on August 30, 1945. Its population rebounded quickly after the war, as skilled Chinese migrants fled from the Chinese Civil War and more refugees crossed the border when the Chinese Communist Party took control of mainland China in 1949. Hong Kong became the first of the four Asian tiger economies to industrialize during the 1950s. With a rapidly increasing population, the colonial government attempted reforms to improve infrastructure and public services. The Public Housing Estate Program, Independent Commission Against Corruption, and Mass Transit Railway were all established during the post-war decades to provide safer housing, integrity in the civil service, and more reliable transportation. Nevertheless, Widespread public discontent resulted in multiple protests from the 1950s to 1980s, including pro-Republic of China and pro-Chinese Communist Party protests. In the 1967 Hong Kong riots, pro-PRC protesters clashed with the British colonial government. As many as 51 were killed and 802 were injured in the violence, including dozens killed by the Royal Hong Kong Police via beatings and shootings. Although the territory's competitiveness in manufacturing gradually declined because of rising labor and property costs, it transitioned to a service-based economy. By the early 1990s, Hong Kong had established itself as a global financial center and shipping hub. The colony faced an uncertain future as the end of the new territory's lease approached, and Governor Murray MacLeos raised the question of Hong Kong's status with Deng Xiaoping in 1979. 
Diplomatic negotiations with China resulted in the 1984 Sino-British Joint Declaration, in which the United Kingdom agreed to transfer the colony in 1997 and China would guarantee Hong Kong's economic and political systems for 50 years after the transfer. The impending transfer triggered a wave of mass emigration as residents feared an erosion of civil rights, the rule of law, and quality of life. Over half a million people left the territory during the peak migration period from 1987 to 1996. The Legislative Council became a fully elected legislature for the first time in 1995 and extensively expanded its functions and organizations throughout the last years of the colonial rule. Hong Kong was transferred to China on July 1, 1997, after 156 years of British rule. Immediately after the transfer, Hong Kong was severely affected by several crises. The Hong Kong government was forced to use substantial foreign exchange reserves to maintain the Hong Kong dollar's currency peg during the 1997 Asian financial crisis, and the recovery from this was muted by an H5N1 avian flu outbreak and a housing surplus. This was followed by the 2003 SARS epidemic, during which the territory experienced its most serious economic downturn. Political debates after the transfer of sovereignty have centered around the region's democratic development and the Chinese central government's adherence to the one country, two systems principle. After reversal of the last colonial era legislative council democratic reforms following the handover, the regional government unsuccessfully attempted to enact national security legislation pursuant to Article 23 of the Basic Law. The central government decision to implement nominee pre-screening before allowing chief executive elections triggered a series of protests in 2014 which became known as the Umbrella Revolution. Discrepancies in the electoral registry and disqualification of elected legislators after the 2016 Legislative Council elections and enforcement of national law in the West Kowloon High Speed Railway Station raised further concerns about the region's autonomy. In June 2019, mass protests erupted in response to a proposed extradition amendment bill permitting the extradition of fugitives to mainland China. The protests are the largest in Hong Kong's history, with organizers claiming to have attracted more than 3 million Hong Kong residents. The Hong Kong regional government and Chinese central government responded to the protests with a number of administrative measures to quell dissent. In June 2020, the Legislative Council passed the National Anthem Ordinance, which criminalized insults to the National Anthem of China. The Chinese central government meanwhile enacted the Hong Kong National Security Law to help quell protests in the region. Nine months later, in March 2021, the Chinese central government introduced amendments to Hong Kong's electoral system, which included the reduction of directly elected seats in the Legislative Council and the requirement that all candidates be vetted and approved by a Beijing-appointed Candidate Eligibility Review Committee. Hong Kong is a special administrative region of China, with executive, legislative, and judicial powers devolved from the national government. The Sino-British Joint Declaration provided for economic and administrative continuity through the transfer of sovereignty, resulting in an executive-led governing system largely inherited from the territory's history as a British colony. Under these terms and the one country, Two systems principle, the basic law of Hong Kong is the regional constitution. The regional government is composed of three branches. Executive, the chief executive is responsible for enforcing regional law, can force reconsideration of legislation, and appoints executive council members and principal officials. Acting with the executive council, the chief executive in council can propose new bills, issue subordinate legislation, and has authority to dissolve the legislature. 
In states of emergency or public danger, the chief executive in council is further empowered to enact any regulation necessary to restore public order. Legislature, the unicameral legislative council enacts regional law, approves budgets, and has the power to impeach a sitting chief executive. Judiciary, the court of final appeal and lower courts interpret laws and overturn those inconsistent with the basic law. Judges are appointed by the chief executive on the advice of a recommendation commission. The chief executive is the head of government and serves for a maximum of two five-year terms. The state council, led by the premier of China, appoints the chief executive after nomination by the election committee, which is composed of 1,200 business, community, and government leaders. The Legislative Council has 90 members, each serving a four-year term. 20 are directly elected from geographical constituencies, 35 represent functional constituencies, FC, and 40 are chosen by an election committee consisting of representatives appointed by the Chinese central government. 30 FC councillors are selected from limited electorates representing sectors of the economy or special interest groups, and the remaining five members are nominated from sitting district council members and selected in region-wide double direct elections. All popularly elected members are chosen by proportional representation. The 30 limited electorate functional constituencies fill their seats using first-past-the-post or instant runoff voting. 22 political parties have representatives elected to the Legislative Council in the 2016 election. These parties have aligned themselves into three ideological groups, the pro-Beijing camp, the current government, the pro-democracy camp, and localist groups. The Chinese Communist Party does not have an official political presence in Hong Kong and its members do not run in local elections. Hong Kong is represented in the National People's Congress by 36 deputies chosen through an electoral college and 203 delegates in the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference appointed by the central government. Chinese national law does not generally apply in the region and Hong Kong is treated as a separate jurisdiction. Its judicial system is based on common law, continuing the legal tradition established during British rule. Local courts may refer to precedents set in English law and overseas jurisprudence. However, mainland criminal procedure law applies to cases investigated by the Office for Safeguarding National Security of the CPG and the CSAR. Interpretative and amending power over the basic law and jurisdiction over acts of state lie with the central authority, making regional courts ultimately subordinate to the mainland socialist civil law system. Decisions made by the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress override any territorial judicial process. Furthermore, in circumstances where the Standing Committee declares a state of emergency in Hong Kong, the State Council may enforce national law in the region. The territory's jurisdictional independence is most apparent in its immigration and taxation policies. The Immigration Department issues passports for permanent residents which differ from those of the mainland or Macau, and the region maintains a regulated border with the rest of the country. All travelers between Hong Kong and China and Macau must pass through border controls, regardless of nationality. Mainland Chinese citizens do not have right of abode in Hong Kong and are subject to immigration controls. Public finances are handled separately from the national government. Taxes levied in Hong Kong do not fund the central authority. The Hong Kong Garrison of the People's Liberation Army is responsible for the region's defense. Although the Chairman of the Central Military Commission is Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, the regional government may request assistance from the garrison. 
Hong Kong residents are not required to perform military service and current law has no provision for local enlistment, so its defense is composed entirely of non-Hong Kongers. The central government and Ministry of Foreign Affairs handle diplomatic matters, but Hong Kong retains the ability to maintain separate economic and cultural relations with foreign nations. The territory actively participates in the World Trade Organization, the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum, the International Olympic Committee, and many United Nations agencies. The regional government maintains trade offices in Greater China and other nations. The imposition of Hong Kong national security law by the central government in Beijing in June 2020 resulted in the suspension of bilateral extradition treaties by the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Finland, and Ireland. The United States ended its preferential economic and trade treatment of Hong Kong in July 2020 because it was no longer able to distinguish Hong Kong as a separate entity from the People's Republic of China. The territory is divided into 18 districts, each represented by a district council. These advise the government on local issues such as public facility provisioning, community program maintenance, cultural promotion, and environmental policy. There are a total of 479 district council seats, 452 of which are directly elected. Rural committee chairmen, representing outlying villages and towns, fill the 27 non-elected seats. Hong Kong is governed by a hybrid regime that is not fully representative of the population. Legislative council members elected by functional constituencies composed of professional and special interest groups are accountable to these narrow corporate electorates and not the general public. This electoral arrangement has guaranteed a pro-establishment majority in the legislature since the transfer of sovereignty. Similarly, the chief executive is selected by establishment politicians and corporate members of the election committee rather than directly elected. Although universal suffrage for the chief executive and all legislative council elections are defined goals of basic law articles 45 and 68, the legislature is only partially directly elected and the executive continues to be nominated by an unrepresentative body. The government has been repeatedly petitioned to introduce direct elections for these positions. Ethnic minorities, except those of European ancestry, have marginal representation in government and often experience discrimination in housing, education, and employment. Employment vacancies and public service appointments frequently have language requirements which minority job seekers do not meet and language education resources remain inadequate for Chinese learners. Foreign domestic helpers, predominantly women from the Philippines and Indonesia, have little protection under regional law. Although they live and work in Hong Kong, these workers are not treated as ordinary residents and do not have the right of abode in the territory. Sex trafficking in Hong Kong is an issue. Local and foreign women and girls are often forced into prostitution in brothels, homes, and businesses in the city. The joint declaration guarantees the basic law of Hong Kong for 50 years after the transfer of sovereignty. It does not specify how Hong Kong will be governed after 2047 and the central government's role in determining the territory's future system of government is the subject of political debate and speculation. Hong Kong's political and judicial systems may be integrated with China's at that time or the territory may continue to be administered separately. However, in response to large-scale protests in 2019 and 2020, the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress passed a controversial Hong Kong national security law. 
The law criminalizes secession, subversion, terrorism, and collusion with foreign elements and establishes the Office for Safeguarding National Security of the CPG and the XAR, an investigative office under Central People's Government Authority in Mian from XAR jurisdiction. Some of the aforementioned acts were previously considered protected speech under Hong Kong law. The United Kingdom considers the law to be a serious violation of the Joint Declaration. In October 2020, Hong Kong police arrested seven pro-democracy politicians over tussles with pro-Beijing politicians in the Legislative Council in May. They were charged with contempt and interfering with members of the council, while none of the pro-Beijing lawmakers were detained. Annual commemorations of the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests and massacre were also cancelled amidst fears of violating the national security law. In March 2021, the Chinese central government unilaterally changed Hong Kong's electoral system and established the Candidate Eligibility Review Committee, which would be tasked with screening and evaluating political candidates for their patriotism. Hong Kong is on China's southern coast, 60 kilometers, 37 miles east of Macau, on the east side of the mouth of the Pearl River estuary. It is surrounded by the South China Sea on all sides except the north, which neighbors the Guangdong city of Shenzhen along the Sham Chun River. The territory's 1,110.18 square kilometers, 428.64 square miles area, 2,754.97 square kilometers if the maritime area is included, consists of Hong Kong Island, the Kowloon Peninsula, the New Territories, Lantau Island, and over 200 other islands. Of the total area, 1073 square kilometers 414 square miles is land and 35 square kilometers 14 square miles is water the territory's highest point is Tai Mo Shan 957 meters 3140 feet above sea level urban development is concentrated on the Kowloon Peninsula Hong Kong Island and in new towns throughout the new territories. Much of this is built on reclaimed land, 70 square kilometers, 27 square miles, 6% of the total land or about 25% of developed space in the territory is reclaimed from the sea. Undeveloped terrain is hilly to mountainous with very little flat land and consists mostly of grassland, woodland, shrubland, or farmland. About 40% of the remaining land area is country parks and nature reserves. The territory has a diverse ecosystem. Over 3,000 species of vascular plants occur in the region, 300 of which are native to Hong Kong, and thousands of insect, avian, and marine species. Hong Kong has a humid subtropical climate, Koppen CWA, characteristic of southern China, despite being located south of the Tropic of Cancer. Summers are long, hot, and humid, with occasional showers and thunderstorms and warm air from the southwest. Typhoons occur most often then, sometimes resulting in floods or landslides. Winters are short, mild, and usually sunny at the beginning, becoming cloudy towards February. Frequent cold fronts bring strong, cooling winds from the north and occasionally result in chilly weather. Autumn is the sunniest season, while spring is generally cloudy. When there is snowfall, which is extremely rare, it is usually at high elevations. Hong Kong averages 1,709 hours of sunshine per year. Historic temperature extremes at the Hong Kong Observatory are 36.6 degrees Celsius, 97.9 degrees Fahrenheit on August 22, 2017 and 0, 0.0 degrees Celsius, 32.0 degrees Fahrenheit on January 18, 1893. 
the highest and lowest recorded temperatures in all of Hong Kong are 39.0 degrees Celsius 102 degrees Fahrenheit at Wetland Park on August 22, 2017 and minus 6.0 degrees Celsius 21.2 degrees Fahrenheit at Tiamo Shan on January 24, 2016. However, Due to the human nature of Hong Kong, the numbers don't reflect the actual feelings of being outside in the X degree weather that is actually reported. 35C in Hong Kong feels way hotter than 35C in some place dry like the United States. Hong Kong has the world's largest number of skyscrapers, with 482 towers taller than 150 meters, 490 feet, and the third largest number of high-rise buildings in the world. The lack of available space restricted development to high-density residential tenements and commercial complexes packed closely together on buildable land. Single-family detached homes are uncommon and generally only found in outlying areas. The International Commerce Center and Two International Finance Center are the tallest buildings in Hong Kong and are among the tallest in the Asia-Pacific region. Other distinctive buildings lining the Hong Kong Island skyline include the HSBC Main Building, the Anemometer Top Triangular Central Plaza, the Circular Hopo Center, and the Sharp Edge Bank of China Tower. Demand for new construction has contributed to frequent demolition of older buildings, freeing space for modern high-rises. However, many examples of European and Lingnan architecture are still found throughout the territory. Older government buildings are examples of colonial architecture. The 1846 Flagstaff House, the former residence of the commanding British military officer, is the oldest Western-style building in Hong Kong. Some, including the Court of Final Appeal Building and the Hong Kong Observatory, retain their original function, and others have been adapted and reused. The former Marine Police Headquarters was redeveloped into a commercial and retail complex, and Bethany, built in 1875 as a sanatorium, houses the Hong Kong Academy for Performing Arts. The Tinau Temple, dedicated to the sea goddess Mazu, originally built in 1012 and rebuilt in 1266, is the territory's oldest existing structure. The Ping Shan Heritage Trail has architectural examples of several imperial Chinese dynasties, including the Sui Sing La Pagoda, Hong Kong's only remaining pagoda. Tong Lao, mixed-use tenement buildings constructed during the colonial era, blended southern Chinese architectural styles with European influences. These were especially prolific during the immediate post-war period, when many were rapidly built to house large numbers of Chinese migrants. Examples include Louis Sing Chun, the Blue House in Wan Chai, and the Shanghai Street Shop Houses in Mong Kok. Mass-produced public housing estates, built since the 1960s, are mainly constructed in modernist style. The Census and Statistics Department estimated Hong Kong's population at 7,482,500 in mid-2019. The overwhelming majority, 92%, is Han Chinese, most of whom are Taishanese, Teochew, Hakka, and other Cantonese peoples. The remaining 8% are non-ethnic Chinese minorities, primarily Filipinos, Indonesians, and South Asians. However, most Filipinos and Indonesians in Hong Kong are short-term workers. According to a 2016 thematic report by the Hong Kong government, after excluding foreign domestic helpers, the real number of non-Chinese ethnic minorities in the city was 263,593, or 3.6% of Hong Kong's population. About half the population have some form of British nationality, a legacy of colonial rule. 3.4 million residents have British national, overseas, status, 
and 260,000 British citizens live in the territory. The vast majority also hold Chinese nationality, automatically granted to all ethnic Chinese residents at the transfer of sovereignty. Headline population density exceeds 7,060 people slash KM2 and is the fourth highest in the world. The predominant language is Cantonese, a variety of Chinese originating in Guangdong. It is spoken by 94.6% of the population, e.e. 0.9% as a first language and 5.7% as a second language. Slightly over half the population, 53.2%, speaks English, the other official language, 4.3% are native speakers, and 48.9% speak English as a second language. Code switching, mixing English and Cantonese in informal conversation is common among the bilingual population. Post-handover governments have promoted Mandarin, which is currently about as prevalent as English. 48.6% of the population speak Mandarin, with 1.9% native speakers and 46.7% as a second language. Traditional Chinese characters are used in writing rather than the simplified characters used in the mainland. Among the religious population, the traditional three teachings of China, Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoism have the most adherents, 20%, followed by Christianity, 12%, and Islam, 4%. Followers of other religions, including Sikhism, Hinduism, and Judaism, generally originate from regions where their religion predominates. Life expectancy in Hong Kong was 82.3 years for males and 88.17 years for females in 2022, the highest in the world. Cancer, pneumonia, heart disease, cerebrovascular disease, and accidents are the territory's five leading causes of death. The universal public health care system is funded by general tax revenue and treatment is highly subsidized. On average, 95% of healthcare costs are covered by the government. Income inequality has risen since the transfer of sovereignty as the region's aging population has gradually added to the number of non-working people. Although median household income steadily increased during the decade to 2016, the wage gap remained high. The 90th percentile of earners received 41% of all income. The city has the most billionaires per capita, with one billionaire per 109,657 people. Despite government efforts to reduce the growing disparity, median income for the top 10% of earners is 44 times that of the bottom 10%. Hong Kong has a market economy focused on services characterized by low taxation, minimal government market intervention, and an established international financial market. It is the world's 35th largest economy, with a nominal GDP of approximately 373 billion US dollars. Hong Kong's economy ranked at the top of the Heritage Foundation's Economic Freedom Index between 1995 and 2021. However, Hong Kong was removed from the index by the Heritage Foundation in 2021, with the foundation citing a loss of political freedom and autonomy. Almost indistinguishable in many respects from other major Chinese commercial centers like Shanghai and Beijing. The Hong Kong Stock Exchange is the seventh largest in the world, with a market capitalization of 30.4 trillion Hong Kong dollars, 3.87 trillion US dollars as of December 2018. Hong Kong is ranked as the 14th most innovative territory in the Global Innovation Index in 2022. The city is sometimes referred to as Silicon Harbor, a nickname derived from Silicon Valley in California. Hong Kong hosts several high-tech and innovation companies including several multinational companies. 
Hong Kong is the 10th largest trading entity in exports and imports, 2017, trading more goods in value than its gross domestic product. Over half of its cargo throughput consists of transshipments, goods traveling through Hong Kong. Products from mainland China account for about 40% of that traffic. The city's location allowed it to establish a transportation and logistics infrastructure which includes the world's seventh busiest container port and the busiest airport for international cargo. The territory's largest export markets are mainland China and the United States. Hong Kong is a key part of the 21st century maritime Silk Road. It has little arable land and few natural resources, importing most of its food and raw materials. More than 90% of Hong Kong's food is imported, including nearly all of its meat and rice. Agricultural activity is 0.1% of GDP and consists of growing premium food and flower varieties. Although the territory and one of Asia's largest manufacturing economies during the latter half of the colonial era, Hong Kong's economy is now dominated by the service sector. The sector generates 92.7% of economic output, with the public sector accounting for about 10%. Between 1961 and 1997, Hong Kong's gross domestic product increased by a factor of 180 and per capita GDP increased by a factor of 87. The territory's GDP relative to mainland China's peaked at 27% in 1993. It fell to less than 3% in 2017 as the mainland developed and liberalized its economy. Economic and infrastructure integration with China has increased significantly since the 1978 start of market liberalization on the mainland. Since resumption of cross-boundary train service in 1979, many rail and road links have been improved and constructed, facilitating trade between regions. The closer economic partnership arrangement formalized a policy of free trade between the two areas, with each jurisdiction pledging to remove remaining obstacles to trade and cross-boundary investment. A similar economic partnership with Macau details the liberalization of trade between the special administrative regions. Chinese companies have expanded their economic presence in the territory since the transfer of sovereignty. Mainland firms represent over half of the Hang Seng Index value, up from 5% in 1997. As the mainland liberalized its economy, Hong Kong's shipping industry faced intense competition from other Chinese ports. Half of China's trade goods were routed through Hong Kong in 1997, dropping to about 13% by 2015. The territory's minimal taxation, common law system and civil service attract overseas corporations wishing to establish a presence in Asia. The city has the second highest number of corporate headquarters in the Asia Pacific region. Hong Kong is a gateway for foreign direct investment in China, giving investors open access to mainland Chinese markets through direct links with the Shanghai and Shenzhen stock exchanges. The territory was the first market outside mainland China for renminbi denominated bonds and is one of the largest hubs for offshore renminbi trading. In November 2020, Hong Kong's Financial Services and the Treasury Bureau proposed a new law that will restrict cryptocurrency trading to professional investors only, leaving amateur traders, 93% of Hong Kong's trading population, out of the market. The government has had a passive role in the economy. Colonial governments had little industrial policy and implemented almost no trade controls. Under the doctrine of positive non-interventionism, post-war administrations deliberately avoided the direct allocation of resources, active intervention was considered detrimental to economic growth. While the economy transitioned to a service basis during the 1980s, late colonial governments introduced interventionist policies. 
Post handover administrations continued and expanded these programs, including export credit guarantees, a compulsory pension scheme, a minimum wage, anti-discrimination laws, and a state mortgage backer. Tourism is a major part of the economy, accounting for 5% of GDP. In 2016, 26.6 million visitors contributed 258 billion Hong Kong dollars, 32.9 billion US dollars, to the territory, making Hong Kong the 14th most popular destination for international tourists. It is the most popular Chinese city for tourists, receiving over 70% more visitors than its closest competitor, Macau. The city is ranked as one of the most expensive cities for expatriates. However, since 2020, there has been a sharp decline in incoming visitors due to tight COVID-19 travel restrictions. Additionally, due to the closure of Russian airspace in 2022, multiple airlines decided to cease their operations in Hong Kong. In an attempt to attract tourists back to Hong Kong, the Hong Kong government announced plans to give away 500,000 free airline tickets in 2023.